you beat everybody out for the job. Take me back to the day that you learned you actually got the job. You know, it was an exciting day for me, obviously. I'd been watching Arlington ISD and had been a fan of the work that Dr. Cavazos, the Board of Trustees in the community had been doing for a while. And uh, you see great work with other school districts around the state of Texas. And I've been a fan of Arlington ISD for a while. So through the interview process, it did start to become a little surreal because I'm interviewing for one of those districts that I held in such high regard. When I got that phone call, I was surprised, honestly. I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is coming true. And, and the board called me and, and offered me the position I obviously eagerly accepted. So it's been a whirlwind, it's been exciting, but um, it's humbling as well. Yeah. Dr. Smith, what's gonna be your biggest challenge? I think number one thing is being visible enough for everybody in the large school district. I think that's a challenge no matter um, what, what, whoever comes into this position because it is such a large school district. So I think for me, it's about getting out and seeing and hearing the good work that's happening throughout all of our schools and all of our facilities and meeting the community members that I need to meet. That's just gonna take some time because of such a large school system. Other than that, I think, you know, we always have to keep focusing on what, what we're here for, and that's the experience for our students and creating those experiences for students to thrive in Arlington ISD. And so if I can keep pushing to get out there, understand the system, learn about what's happening here, celebrate the great things that are happening in our school district, but also gather that information and continue to make plans for the future so it positively impacts kids, that's the work that I have in front of me. Your career includes the classroom, school leadership, uh, coaching. Out of your different roles that you've had in education, what's going to help you most as superintendent? You know, I think it all goes back to being a classroom teacher in my mind because that's the, the core purpose of why we're here. What happens in the classrooms throughout our school district on a daily basis are really why we exist. We want to create those opportunities for students, every student in our system to thrive. And that experience that I had teaching kids, being in different school districts, being in different positions, it all comes back to the experience that we want to create for kids. So I, I would have to say the, the teacher position is the one that probably should influence me the most and I believe does influence me the most. When it comes to test scores, um, how Will Dr. Smith get those test scores up? You've got, um, you've got some challenges in the reading and the math. I think um, probably one of the best successes when it comes to test scores is the high school level um, being close to 50% at or above proficiency. How are you going to get those test scores up? I think there's, there's two things that we have to do. Is one, we've got to listen to our teachers and ensure that our teachers' voices are heard about what resources and supports they need to be able to create the right conditions in the classroom. Just going back to my previous question, what happens between the teacher and the student in that classroom is what generates that learning experience for students. So really being a thoughtful listener for our teachers and ensuring that we have the right resources, supports that are aligned to the experience we wanna create for kids. I think that's the number one thing we need to do. Second thing we need to do is continue to work and empower parents in our school system to be good supports. We wanna to continue to make sure they know what's happening in our schools, what their students are doing so that they can best support them. The learning experience for kids doesn't just automatically turn on at seven in the morning and shut off at three in the afternoon. It actually is an ongoing experience from the day a student's born through the time they uh, dive into adulthood. And that journey should happen not only with the school district, but with parents and community as partners here. And so we'll continue to build off of those strong partnerships we have with our parents and ensure that they have the right tools and resources as well. Um, but really listening and learning, I think, is the first step to start addressing some of the academic challenges along the way. I will say this though, I believe that Arlington ISD has done a good job recovering in the last couple of years. Every school district felt impacts from COVID and that's, that you can't deny that. And Arlington ISD I think has done an outstanding job in um, making sure that we were moving out of that COVID impact and into really continuing to focus on each and every student and how we can help them thrive. When you started in education, uh, teachers and principals and superintendents didn't have to think about safety as much as you do today. And Arlington has had his own share of, you know, of school shootings. 
What do you say to parents and students about keeping them safe in your decision making for this district? You know, one of my first, um, I, I believe it was in my first semester of teaching experience, there was a, a shooting at Virginia Tech. And I remember that very clearly being a classroom teacher and thinking, oh, oh my, what's going on here? I think the message that we have to keep sending to parents is we have safe schools right now, but we continue to work to make them safe. I know Arlington ISD has a layered approach to safety and security here that they've been working on for years, and I think it's paid huge benefits for our students. I also know that we've worked really hard to ensure that our parents and community can know and track safety by the safety tracker that's on our, our, on our website. Being transparent with that information using experiences to help us learn and grow and continue to make our buildings safer. Those are all ways that we constantly work at that. But it's, it, I have a, a graduating high school senior and I've had students through school systems and some of these horrific events. So it, it impacts me not only as an educator, but a parent as well. And I think parents need to know and understand we see that, we hear that, and we're constantly working to ensure that our students and our staff are in the safest environment. I, I, look, I read your bio, and based on your experience, you probably could have gone anywhere in the country and gotten a job as a superintendent. Why Arlington? Well, a couple of reasons. We moved here a few years ago to be near family in Central Texas and really fell in love with being close to family, but also in love with Texas as well. And then, as I said earlier, I'm a fan of Arlington ISD's work as an educator you see and you hear about the districts that have been doing things well for a very long time. And Arlington ISD is one of those school districts. And so when the opportunity came open this fall to apply, I decided to put my name in and, and I'm grateful to be here. Right now, um, I, I looked online <laughs> to see if, if Arlington ISD um, was any of the, in the top 10 districts in the country, uh, you know, by different organizations that do studies. Um, didn't find it there. Can Dr. Smith get Arlington ISD in those high-ranking studies? You know, here's what I'll say. Dr. Smith can't do any of it alone. And I think that's an important piece to note. One of the things that drew me to Arlington that I'm, I'm talking about is a synergy that I see and feel between the school district, the community, and the families that we serve. So Dr. Smith can't get there alone. Together, I think we can do amazing things for our kids moving forward. And I do, I do uh, think that we can definitely continue to pursue greatness in, in multiple measures along the way. But I know I can't do it alone. And it's about pulling a team together to make sure we're all pointed in the same direction and working together so that we can make something special for our kids. Graduation um, rates, um, I think I read something like 80% graduation rate. For, the, for those students not graduating, for those students who are failing, what's your message? You know, a couple of things. One, we want to listen and learn to do what's been their stumbling blocks along the way because we believe we can learn from that. But also, education doesn't have to end right there. Sometimes with those statistics, they're just measured by a four-year graduation rate, et cetera. And so sometimes it does take students a little bit longer. They have life circumstances that have impacted them, and it might take them a little bit longer to get that diploma. Our job is to make sure we're helping them get that diploma in the right time, the right pathway for them to succeed moving forward. And so reach out, tell us what you need, and we'll, we'll continue to support you. We want to make sure we get you across that finish line for the future. Uh, I think your official day is, start day is January 30th? Yes, sir, Tuesday coming up. Tell me about day one. Day one, we're going to start out on campuses. The most important thing that I, I believe I can do is be out and be visible and see what's happening in our schools. And so the first official day, there's no other way to start than being out on campuses. We'll try and hit four or five campuses in the morning and, and uh, start to meet people. And then that'll continue throughout the spring. We'll keep working our way around the school district and make sure that I'm making the connections that we need to make, listening to the people that I need to listen to. and and building off of the great work that's been done here. Um, as far as you starting as superintendent, if people were looking for something to change because you're here, um, for the better, for the worse, whatever the case may be, what would that be? You know, I don't know yet. And I, I, that's the beauty of this right now, is not even having my first day yet, I'm not sure what they're gonna tell me. 
and I'm interested to hear what's on their minds. I think they're going to tell me about how proud they are of the school district. I think they're going to tell me about the amazing specialized programs we have as a school district here in Arlington ISD. But I'm sure along the way I'll, ha I'll probably have some people bend my ear and, and, and tell me about the things that they'd like to change. And just know they've got a, an open and listening ear because just like them, I want to make the school district the best it can possibly be for the future as well. You mentioned um, you can't do it alone, partnerships for you as a superintendent outside of the district, what would be the most important partnership to help you be successful? This is a, this is a semi answer to your question, but you know, our board of trustees is publicly elected, but they volunteer and they are, they are public servants that are serving our community well. And so I think that my initial team is that board of trustees that I need to make sure I'm hearing, I'm listening, I'm understanding what's on their mind as publicly elected representatives to serve the school district. That's the first team. Then from there, it's got to be our parents. And our parents are the number one support that we have for students and their learning experience. So it's really got to be parents after that. I know that there are a lot of business partnerships that I, I need to continue to build on and form. And if I started listing them, I'd, mi I'd miss somebody. So I'll stay away from that part of it. But I'd say, it really has to be start with our board of trustees and our parents for that, that partnership success.